Hey, welcome to my Zig Invaders micro course. Um, in this series, we're going to build a complete Space Invaders clone using the wonderful Zig programming language and the fantastic Raylib graphics library. Uh, if you're an experienced Zig dev, you can probably get through this course in about an hour, but I'm going to go slow and explain topics here with the goal of introducing Zig to non-Zig developers. Now, I'm on a massive screen and I have some uh, hard-coded dimensions for this. So it's a little small to see, but hopefully you'll get the idea. So there are space invaders. I can move and shoot. There are these little barricades that protect me, but you can also destroy your own barricade. And there is a game over screen with a score that is tallied based off the space invaders that you hit. There's also a victory screen if you manage to eliminate all the space invaders. There's only one level, but I think by the end of the course, you'll have the foundation in place that if you wanted to, you could expand upon this and continue building and building and building. So a little housekeeping to get out of the way. This micro course is free. You should not pay for it. If you have paid for it, you've done something wrong. The videos are uploaded on YouTube as a playlist and are intended to be watched in playlist order. If you found one of these videos and you haven't started from the beginning, you probably want to get to the playlist and watch from the beginning. Additionally, the videos, as well as supplemental text content and an optional quiz at the end, are also available on courses.bradseifert.com, which is free to sign up, free to use. This course is free on there. So far, everything on there is free. I just wanted a better medium than YouTube to really build lessons. If you have questions or get stuck on a specific video, please leave a comment in that video's lesson, and I'll do what I can to help you out. If you need more comprehensive help or just want to chat more about the micro courses topics, you can join the Code with Cypher Discord uh, and participate in discussions in this course's specific channel. Finally, the source code for the finished project is available on my GitHub, and there's a link for that in the description below, as well as a link for the Discord in the description below. Before we start coding, let's make sure that you have everything installed. First, head to ziglang.org and download Zig version 0.15.2 or newer. You'll want to follow the instructions for your operating system. And I'm going to let you do this on your own because these instructions may have changed by the time you watch this video, and it's just better to follow the instructions from Zig directly. But again, you can find that on zigling.org slash learn slash getting started. Now, I did say 0.15.2 or newer. I'll be coding against Zig 0.15.2 for these videos. But there's a very important distinction to make because at the time of recording, Zig is still pre-version 1.0. Things do break and change as the team finds better ways to address these items, which unfortunately means that some of the code in this video series may not work on newer versions of Zig. That being said, it also means that we continue to get the best language we can have as we're not tied down with supporting older versions of the Zig language when new versions are released. Some people may not want to deal with that friction, but I think it's a net positive for Zig's long-term health overall. Okay, once Zig is installed, you're going to open your terminal and type Zig version to verify it's working. Let me make this a little bigger for you. Zig version 0.15.2. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and create a directory for our project. I'm calling mine Zig Invaders. So I'm in my projects directory. You would put this wherever you put your projects. And I'm just going to go ahead and make dir Zig Invaders. And then I'm going to CD into Zig Invaders. This is where we will build our game. So let's go ahead and set up our project structure. In our project directory, we're going to run Zig init. This creates a basic Zig project with several files. Let's explore what we've got. First, there's build.zig. This is our build configuration file. You can think of it like a make file or like a cmakelist.txt, but it's written in Zig itself. If we open it up, you'll see it creates an executable and sets up testing. So let's do that now. All right, there's a lot going on in here. Notice all the comments. They're really helpful, but it can feel a little overwhelming at first. Some of the key parts from this are the standard target options, which allows us to compile for different platforms, standard optimize options, which controls debug versus release builds with Zig's many different release modes, such as release fast, release safe, release small. And down here, we're creating a module. So our module is called Zig Invaders. We have a root source file, which we actually don't need for this, so we'll remove this at some point. And then down here, we have our executable. So this is creating the executable program that runs. It links to our main.zig, 
It uses those values for target and optimize, and it passes those in when creating the module. And we can manage imports for that as well. The next major thing is this run step. So this creates a top level step. These steps can be used by zig build. So for example, zig build run executes the run step. Well, specifically it executes the step with the name run, but in our case, we have that referred to as a run step variable here. There's a lot more that you can do with a build.zig, but I'm gonna try to keep it light and focus on just the things that we need for our zig space invaders clone. Next, we have our build.zig.zon. So that is another file here. And if we open build.zig.zon, we have a similar looking file, but this one's a little different. This is essentially our package manifest. It defines our project name, version, and dependencies. We'll also add Raylib here soon. So what is Zon? That might be something new to you. So Zon is the Zig object notation. It is a specific notation that is built for Zig. And you'll notice that the very first character I have here is a dot. So we have an anonymous struct, so dot, and then our curly braces. And then we have some fields. So we have a field called name, a field called version, a fingerprint that is auto-generated for us, the minimum Zig version, and then we have dependencies, which is empty in our case for now, and some paths that are relevant uh, to be included in this package. Not a ton going on here, but again, you can sort of think of, uh, if you're coming from like a JavaScript land, you can think of the build.zig.zon as a good chunk of your package JSON, but not your entire package JSON. So those steps that you would specify in your package JSON with like NPM would go in the build.zig, but in the build.zig.zon, you would have the other items that would be in your package JSON, like your project name, the version, the dependencies, those type of things. Finally, there's a source directory with main.zig. So if we take a look at source, there's main.zig and root.zig. The difference here is quite interesting. So it's just a convention. You can change this as much as you'd like, but conventions, uh, conventionally speaking, main.zig is going to be your executable. It's going to be your application root.zig will be your library. So if you were to write some library code and not an executable, you would, following convention, put it in root.zig. If you were to create an executable and not build a library, you would put it in main.zig. Uh, maybe you would do both. Maybe you would expose something as a library, but also provide a CLI for it. So the CLI bits would be in main.zig, and the uh, most of the code would be in root.zig. For us though, since we're just building an executable, we're gonna be working mainly in main.zig. From here, you should be able to open your main.zig and see that there's a couple things going on. We'll get more into the actual zig code and how everything works here in a moment, but the key thing is you should have a couple different items here. You have your imports for the standard library, you have an import for zig invaders, which is our module um, that we've created, our, our uh, root, Dot zig wrapped up in a module. We have a main method here via pub fun main that prints all of your bases are belong to us, or sorry, all your code base are belong to us. And then it executes the buffered print method from the zig invaders file, which again, that is our root.zig. We'll be removing that, so don't worry too much about that. Right here, we have a test. This is a simple test. And then they have an example with fuzzing as well. For now, we can close this, and to wrap this little piece of the lesson up, I just want to use zig build and make sure everything builds, and then we can execute that run step via zig build run, and you can see all of your code base are belong to us. In the next lesson, we will add the Raylib graphics library so we can start drawing to the screen.